innovation is fabulous. You, you see how it transforms uh, communities. It can truly make that difference. You've talked a lot about partnership, um, but oftentimes getting that good idea off the paper or out of the lab actually into application is, is pretty darn tough to do because of the costs involved and no one's willing to take that risk, particularly in these remote, high cost, um, small population areas. What do we need to do more and better? There's, we, we keep using the term partnering, collaborating. We've got national labs. What, what else do we need to do to make sure that the good ideas, the innovators are, are, are putting out there are actually getting translated into action and making a difference? Throw it out to anybody here. I'll, I'll take a first stab at it. Um, I think that one of the things that I've found that's kind of really interesting and neat about Alaska is the way that these different stakeholders do work together. I think everyone referenced all these different partnerships that we've developed internally. I feel like our utilities have been a real leader in the development of renewable energy, as have our, um, as have our, our, our native organizations in the state, whether that's, a, whether that's um, for profit on a nonprofit side. And I think that that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. We've really developed and fostered these key partnerships. So when we're doing work at the university, we're already working with the end user when we have things in the lab, when we're coming up with ideas. We're already talking to Clay about whether this is a viable idea moving forward for looking at small modular gasification systems. We're already working with people that could potentially be using that at the end of the day. And I think that in a small place, you have those kinds of opportunities in ways that you don't elsewhere. And that's where I really view Alaska, and Senator, you've talked about this a lot, as this potential for being a real living lab laboratory for the United States because we can test things more quickly, more nimbly than we can in most other places um, and we have the willingness to do so because of the high energy costs and I think that's, that, makes it, that makes things special. I think it was, it was interesting we had National Lab Day in Fairbanks in May of this year and I think many of the directors um, from the various national laboratories around the, the country thought that they were going to come up to Alaska and share everything that they know, I think instead they learned a lot more than they thought in, in that context of the living laboratory. Larry, were you gonna jump in there? Sure, I'd love to. We were, we were very blessed and, and fortunate to have incredible national laboratories that have, have done some remarkable work over the years. They, uh, they take on huge challenges, they throw the resources at it they need till they solve it. And it was great to have them in Alaska to, to look at some of the issues that we've been dealing with in the Arctic and to try and direct some of their resources and some of their expertise to those issues. The, ch the challenges that we've got are tremendous in that it's, it's a very harsh environment, it's, it's a relatively small population, and so a lot of the innovations that we do come up with are a little, little, we're challenged in marketing them because they may or may not apply to the rest of the world. We are fortunate in that some of the, a, lot of the, a lot of the activities that we've taken on, such as biomedical issues, hibernation studies have, have led to, uh, to drugs and techniques for dealing with uh, traumatic disorders that can really help people around the world. And so there are unique innovations that come out of the Arctic that do translate across the, uh, around the globe. But it's, it's, a, it's a difficult leap for us, I will admit. Well, I think this is, this is where assemblies like this, where you have so many people that are focused on, on many of the same issues, maybe just a little bit one off. And I, I, I think about, about some of the smaller entrepreneurs, Brian, that you're working with in, in Juneau. And uh, uh, Eric, I, at lunchtime, I visited with um, a gentleman who's with Arctic Trucks. And we were talking about the specific application of the truck that he has as possibility to, to help the people of no attack with that $10 fuel if they can move this through, through, the, um, through the, the, the winter trail, um, utilizing different technologies, again, that are designed for Arctic application. Very quickly, because we have just one minute left here, but, but in terms of attracting capital, who wants to, to, to jump in here? And, and Brian, you've got the JEDC, the Economic Development uh, uh, Corporation there. 
how do we attract capital, this public-private partnership um, that is so necessary to, again, get these, these proposals off of the, off of the drawing board? And capital isn't always the problem, but it's, it's definitely a, a challenge. You know, and I look around and see uh, native corporations, and they've, we've seen them um, bring capital that they have to bear for small businesses. And we're also working hard to create an angel investing network in Alaska. We, we don't have the, we have entrepreneurs, um, we don't have the mass. So one of the challenges in, in all of our northern countries where we don't have high population densities is just some, figure out ways to create those. And so we, we do that by, um, um, creating events. I mean, this this spring we're creating an angel investing um, event, where we're not only bringing in entrepreneurs together, but we're trying to train up a group of Alaskans to actually learn how to do investing on their own, because uh, capital is an issue, but it's also the expertise um, and knowing who you can tap into um, to help develop your business idea. Go ahead, we're at zero, zero, but go, you get the last word. Okay, well, uh, I think um, kind of hitting both questions, not every community, not every individual is an innovator or an entrepreneur. And I think to attract capital, you have to have a value proposition. You have to be able to show return on investment. So you have to under, if you are an innovator, um, you have to be able to communicate that and show where the value propositions are. For Cordova, where the U.S. imports 90% of its seafood, most of that's farmed. It's one of the top five trade imbalances in the United States. We have the ideal climate for oyster farming, for instance, and the biggest labor-intensive part of that is tumbling the oysters periodically and knocking the shells and barnacles off. So why try to extract energy into an electrical device and then try to deploy that electricity to the oyster farm, which is one of their biggest costs, when you already have that energy in the oyster uh, in the um, ocean. So instead of seeking low energy environments as, for farms, why not seek a high energy environment and design a cage that passively spins and tumbles the oysters when the tide peaks once every two weeks? So that can just be an absolute game changer for a community or for a system that's economically disadvantaged because of distance and, uh, and other logistical challenges. So you just have to have that big view, and when you can take value propositions like that or grow it yourself, then you are just success waiting to happen, and you just need to find the capital. So and if you can have that credibility and approach the market with it, I, I think the money is there. Now you see why we're leading in Alaska. Come on up, everybody. It's wonderful, but we've got extraordinary innovators that are doing great things. We'd like to share all of our good ideas with the rest of you. So thank you for, for listening, and thank you all for all that you do to, to make such incredible contributions. Appreciate it.